Oh, God be praised. So God be the glory. And we just do do what God have would have us do, right? That's it. Amen. To God be the glory. Great things he has done. Yes, yes. So good morning, good afternoon, good night, good morrow, whatever time this message reaches you. May the peace of God continue to be yours. May you experience his love and may he strengthen you with his joy in Jesus' name. Amen. So this morning's message is entitled, last week, uh, oh, good morning, LOR Radio, good morning, Facebook, good morning, YouTube. Last week, uh, Bishop Anderson was away on vacation with his beautiful wife, so he's back. So I'm broadcasting this week with LOR Radio as well, to Gabby the glory. So let me greet everyone. Hallelujah, glory to God. This morning's message is entitled, Victory. So, um, a bishop wasn't here last week right but uh last week's communion was joyful that was the communion message joyful bishop <laughs> and this morning yeah this morning's message is victory listen let me tell you something i got this straight out the bible <laughs> i was actually preparing a message uh that someone had asked me to to bring and let me tell you well, as I'm doing it, the words, but I tell you what, the, the, in March, he gave me the message, part of the message, not all, to be totally transparent, part of the message, and it was about victory. So I'm doing the message for someone, and what do I see? You see the words? They're straight about my Bible. Victory. That is my Bible right there. <laughs> so I was like, okay, that, that is the title. That is the title. There's no getting around that. To God be the glory. So what is victory? Victory is triumph, achievement, a gain. It's success, right? However, to have victory means that there is something that you needed to be triumphant over. Victory does not exist on its own. It shows up where there's a battle. Ergo, whenever you're in a battle, expect a victory. Huh? Expect victory to show up. We need victory now more than ever. And guess what? We have victory. For the child of God, we have victory. For the person who's walking in Christ, we have victory. For those who remain in Christ Jesus, we have victory. We have victory. Now, victory can look, you know, different depending on the circumstances. However, we ought to to be cognizant that as a child of God, walking in the truth of God, living by the word of God, we have victory. Glory to God. So when we read the news that a new pandemic is on the horizon, as recently as I was hearing in the news, when we see attacks on Christians and secular schools where innocent lives are taken, know that all is not lost, okay? Recently, another plan to kill several students in a Christian college was averted. That's victory right there, wouldn't you say? That God thwarted the plans of the enemy of the souls of these young people. There was a young man who had so much ammunition. He was getting ready to take out some folks, but God. 
And what happened? He happened to throw the in the garbage the the uh, um, package in which the magazine for his automatic rifle was, and the custodian saw it and recorded it. Turns out he was getting ready to do some serious damage. But God, victory showed up and intercepted. Hallelujah. Come on, let's praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Now, recently also in the news, after the illegal expulsion, and I said it, it was illegal, expulsion of a black representative's Justin Jones and Justin Pearson because they stood up on the floor for justice against gun violence but receive they received no justice they received no justice because while their jobs uh were illegally taken away representative Gloria Johnson's job remained secure even though she stood in agreement with them against gun violence and why because she was a female? No. Because she was white. Now let me read to you this that I read. It's the latest twist in a political battle that ignited accusation of racism and toxic partnership. Republican House members, largely white and male, employed a disciplinary tool little used since the 1800s to expel Pearson and another black Democratic representative, Justin Jones, while sparing Representative Gloria Johnson, who is white. The Republican supermajority voted to punish Pearson and Jones of Nashville after they, alongside Johnson of Knoxville, broke procedural rules to lead a protest from the House floor calling for gun laws, law reforms. Now, can I say there's victory? Because on April 10th, Monday, April 10th, Justin Jones was reinstated to his seat. And I'm quite sure that Representative Justin Pearson will be reinstated as well. At least we pray he had well praise the lord that i didn't see the news yesterday or today so to god be the glory so there we have victory both have been reinstated hallelujah glory to god so let me ask you a question when we see these injustices when we hear the news when we read the news when we are sent whatever we're sent in our uh smartphones right um are you praying do you pray are you praying or do you pass it on or do you pray before you pass it on because it is essential that we pray we have to stay prayed up we've got to greet the Lord in the morning I don't know about you but on my phone let me tell you something I get news news and more news and can I tell you more often than not, it's not the good news. It's, not, it's terrible news. So we have to stay prayed up. We have to not just pray for ourselves and our families, but we have to pray for those we don't know. Because we're living in these times. And so, when we see these injustices, it's not time to give up hope, but to know that victory will show up. And it does. Hallelujah. Glory to God. The word of God tells us, for a child is born to us. A son is given to us. And the Bible says we're blessed reading and hearing the word of God being read and applying the word of God to our lives. Good morning, Pastor Thornton. Yes, prayer does work. <laughs> so the Bible tells us that the government will rest on his shoulders and he will be called Wonderful Counselor. If you ever need counseling, 
in the middle of the night when you can't call anyone else, if you're having a meltdown, if whatever you're going through, you can't speak, sometimes you can't even speak. You can always communicate with your counselor because he knows your thoughts before you think them. He knows the words you're about to speak before you speak them. He's called Mighty God, Everlasting Father. He's powerful, all-powerful, omnipotent, Everlasting Father. He is not just a God of today. He is eternal. He was before us and will be after our earthly life ends that we, for those who are in Christ, will spend an eternity with. He is also Prince of Peace, our Yahweh Shalom, our Shar Shalom. He gives us peace. Shalom is wholeness. Hallelujah, glory to God. And I just read to you Isaiah chapter uh, 9 and verse 6. This scripture is not just for Christmas time, but it's for all year round. Listen, we need to pray and know that a son was given unto us, as I said, not just for Christmas time, every moment of the day. Glory to God. Prayer changes things. We pray to God who has the power to change the hearts of those in authority. Proverbs 21 and 1 reads, It is as easy for God to steer a king's heart for his purposes as it is for him to direct the course of a stream. Whenever you, you want something done, and I, you know, I share this with folks. Whenever you want something done, listen. Ask God. We tend to ask people first, but we need to ask God first. Trust me. <laughs> oh, hallelujah, glory to God. And so God does it because of his son. When the, his son to whom he gave, the son whom he gave us as a child, right? He was born as a child and he exchanged places with us on the cross, giving us sonship because he's the son that was given to take our place. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Mm. Jesus, Yeshua Mashiach, he gives us victory. Victory in government, victory in the courtrooms, victory in the hospitals, victory in the churches, victory in our families, victory in marriages, victory on the jobs, victory in every area of our lives and in every battle that is going on. He even gives victory in death. Glory to God. He is victory. Jesus shows up and we have victory. You know, I don't know how many of you saw the video of the Dalai Lama, who is considered to be a holy person. He stuck out his tongue and asked a little boy to suck his tongue. Now, can I ask you why? 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 But let me say this. There's victory here too. You may not think so, but walk with me. You know, remember, when, 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 when we walk with Jesus, he unfolds things to us, right? Listen, when behaviors are exposed, we have to realize that there's a battle going on and that something needs to be addressed. Him doing that says that issue needs to be addressed. If we're not uh, transparent with God, if we're not honest with God, you know, I find it, 
<laughs> truly incredible. <laughs> I'm so serious that there are times when I find people in the world to be more honest than Christians. Many of us as Christians, there are so many Christians, seriously, there are a lot of Christians that will man up, be honest, be, take responsibility, be accountable, you know, and, and, and if, if we make a mistake, say, hey, I made a mistake, I'm sorry. However, there are those that they will deflect, point the arrow the other way, point the fingers the other way, and not take responsibility for their actions. Well, I tell you what, the Bible says that God expects us to walk in truth. And only when we walk in truth can we be helped. Seriously. If we're not acknowledging that we have a problem, that problem will never be addressed. There, ergo, we're going to continue in that. So, that, that came to light. And he has apologized. However, I pray he does more than apologize, but really go to God. Now, I don't know what his prayer life is like, but I pray that he goes to God. Now, hmm, I read something else that I want to share with you. And I'm not even going to paraphrase. I'm going to read it because I'm just saying these are the days that we're living in. And that we need to have an individual, intimate relationship with God. We need to spend time with God one-on-one. -on -one. Not time with God as a minister. Not time with God as a spouse. Not time with God as a parent. Not time with God as a child. Meaning, not time with God for someone else. No, time with God for ourselves. One and one, where we do introspection. Lord, am I doing what's right and pleasing in your eyes? Lord, you know, that kind, that kind of thing. You know, like, he's called Wonderful Counselor. You know, if you've ever had a counselor, you know, in certain uh, uh, careers, you need a counselor for yourself. I think all of us need counseling, right? Uh, we, we do, we do. So... The wonderful counselor, it is always wise to be, see our wonderful counselor is also our big brother, is also our savior, is also the bridegroom of our souls. Come on, we are the church, we are the bride. So there are multiple relationships here and we just need to sit there with him sometimes. You, you know what I mean? Visit with a friend. He's the friend that is better than the best friend. Right? And so, let me share this with you. Is a whale sculpture in Salt Lake City to credit with Utah's recent favorable weather forecast? Now, catch this part. True believers say yes. Hold on, hold up. Don't get in a tizzy yet. I know some of you have already caught it, but don't get in a tizzy yet. Let's listen a, bit, a little bit more. About a year ago, a sculpture of a rainbow whale was erected at the intersection of 9th and 9th in Salt Lake City. Seven months later, listen to this, seven months later, a new church was devoted to worshiping the beautiful sculpture. Followers credit the whale with Utah's recent snow flurries, which helped end a recent drought and brought great ski conditions too. So they're saying this was a win-win. And who did they give credit to? A whale, a, a multicolored whale. The sculpture is there. You can Google it after. Now the church of the sacred whale, the church of the sacred whale, is developing a following on social media with believers saying it's no coincidence 
that the weather started improving right after the whale went up in the ninth and ninth neighborhood. Who are these true believers? I couldn't help but asking the question. Once again, Holy Spirit said there's victory. Listen, I didn't see the victory at first. I'm not going to lie. I was like, who are they? Now, what are they talking about? What do you mean they're true believers? This is what the reporter said. Actually, this was on a CBS News. Um, listen, darkness is being exposed. That's victory right there. See, <clears throat> We may always see, we, we think of victory in our heads and in our finite minds. Remember, our, we're limited in our, in our thinking, okay? But our omniscient daddy God, who knows everything, says not so. There was victory right there. Darkness is being exposed. Exodus 20, 3 and 4 reads, You must not have any other God but me. This is what God says. You must not make for yourself an idol of any kind or an image of any kind in the heavens or on earth or in the sea. Where's the whale from? Do you see what's happening? Are you seeing it? There are Christians. We belong to Christ. Yet... Sex is some Christian's God. Money is some Christian's God. Egos are some Christian's God. I told you, I heard, I, I was asking the Lord. I said, Lord, why did you allow the pandemic? Because there were many that put themselves in the pul pulpit. They put themselves above God. So churches were closed for a while. We're living in some dangerous and perilous times. But God, it's, 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 it's not that we should be, it's not that we should be fearful. Sorry, it's not that we should be fearful. We need to spend time with God. We do, we really need to spend time with God. Because if we don't, we can make anything a God over God. We can elevate our spouses in their play in his place, elevate our children in his place, elevate our vehicles in his place, elevate our job in his place. Even ministers of the word of God can elevate everything else over God. We have to be careful. They said true believers are now worshiping a whale. But God, but God, we have to know the light who is Yeshua Mashiach, Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior. He is the one who eradicates the darkness and gives us victory again and again and again. You see, Jesus, he gives us victory over fearfulness. The Bible tells us in Revelation 21 and 8, that the fearful goes to hell. It's in the word of God. But there's victory here. Because listen, if you're plagued by fear, and know that, uh, I was listening to this news report of last week that said there is another bug or a variant of the H1N1 something something whatever they're just all these and 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 um you know i was like okay but god 
We need the Lord now more than ever. Jesus is our victory. He gives us victory again and again and again. No matter what the situation is, he gives us the victory. Hallelujah, glory to God. And so 2 Timothy 1 and 7 tells us, for God will never give you the spirit of fear. So fear is not of God. So when fear comes upon us, we ought to know that it's something that we ought to fight against. It's something that we ought to rebuke. It's something that we ought to reject. It's something that we ought to push away in the mighty matchless name of Jesus. Because it is not of God. The word of God says he will never give us the spirit of fear. But of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit. He gives to us the Holy Spirit who gives us mighty power, love, and self-control. Do you have self-control as a child of God? Do you have self-control over what you speak? Do you have self-control over pride? Do you have self-control over what you eat? Do you have self-control over what you say? Do you have self-control over your emotions? Because, you know, we get led by emotions, but the Bible said we ought not to be. Not that we ought not to feel. He gave us emotions for a reason. Trust. He gave us emotions for a reason. Think about it. If you couldn't experience love, if you couldn't feel love, if you couldn't express love, Bible says also be angry and sin not. Okay? We 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 know that uh we have fight, flight, or freeze, right? And there are times when they serve their purpose. However, I mean when there's a fire, are you gonna stand? No, you're going to flee, right? However, fear the the fear of that comes over us panic anxiety attacks fear causes depression fear causes anxiety fear causes stress fear causes hatred did you know that fear causes envy jealousy and fear that kind of fear that causes people to en be envious and jealous have even led to death it is not of God God has given unto us in the King James Version power love and sound mind When we have sound mind, we can have self-control. Because when our minds are in Christ Jesus, when we have the mind of Christ, we will think and act and do and be as Jesus does and as the Holy Spirit leads us. But when we walk in flesh, not a good thing. Because you know the flesh, right? We get angry at everything. We 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 want to tell people off. Some folks want to give away a piece of their minds. You know, just all matter of the flesh just wants to do what it wants to do. And have Christians saying the heart wants what the heart wants and I'm gonna do what I wanna do. And many times that attitude is really being like the, the marionette with the puppet, the enemy of our souls, pulling those strings. Because when we walk in Christ, we tend to see things more clearly. When we're led by the Spirit of God, we're more liberated. We're freer. And so... God, Jesus gives us the victory over fear. He gives us victory over fear. The Bible tells us perfect love, the perfect love of God 
cast out, cast away, eradicates the darkness of fear. When we know that we're loved by God, when we bask in the love of God, we're never fearful because His love eradicates fear. Now God, Jesus, Yeshua Mashiach, gives us victory over fearful, of faith, faithlessness. Fearfulness over fearfulness, and we don't want to be fearful. The Bible says, go read Revelation 21 and 8. But hear this, faithlessness. Jesus also gives us victory over faithlessness. You see, when we hear the news of things that are happening all around us and a lot of times it's not that great really not that great turn on the news read the news look at our phones and if you're uncertain um if you get news from certain news channels or like if it's sent to your phone rarely you ever see something that is pleasant right but guess what we have to know with certainty the bible said we must have confident expectation so we have to know with certainty that and believe that we have victory before we call We have victory. Why? Because we have the Son, Yeshua Amashiach, who was given to us. In Isaiah 65 and verse 24, the Lord tells us, I will answer them before they call unto me. Isn't that what God says? You can read it for yourself you can go to that scripture for yourself hallelujah glory to god the word of god tells us he says i will answer them now i want you to just pause a little bit and just think before you and i can ever call on god god said wait a minute i've answered him i've answered her Huh? Isn't that beautiful? And then he says, while they're still talking about their needs. So wait a minute. Before I called on God, he answered. While I'm talking about my needs, he says, I will go ahead and answer their prayers. Wow. Win-win. Victory right there. Jesus gives us the victory over faithlessness. All we need to do is trust God. Because while we were yet sinner, God gave his only begotten son. While we were yet sinners, Christ Jesus gave up his life for ours so that we can be reconciled unto God. While we were in sin, he loved us with such a love. You know, today some people won't love you unless you're beautiful they won't love you unless you're wealthy they won't love you unless you have status or position huh you have a great job they won't love you unless you're tall you're handsome you're beautiful they won't love you they won't even look at you unless you're educated there are those who won't give the time of day they won't glance your way they might glance once, but then if they think nothing is there, toop. but think about God. Halitosis, he loves you. Short, he loves you. Tall, he loves you. Slender, he loves you. More weight, he loves you. No matter what the geographic location we're from he loves us see we're all one race 
No, we, we, we like to dissect a lot. We have many uh, 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 churches, denominations. There's one God, one Holy Spirit, and one Savior. Why do we like to dissect and segregate and pull things aside and have exclusivity over here and over there? And to make it seem as if one person is better than the other. There are things that levels all. And at the foot of the cross, it's all. Everybody needs the Lord. And so, Yeshua, Jesus, he gives us victory over faithlessness. So when we put our faith in Christ, we can walk in his faithfulness and we have victory. He gives us victory also over fruitlessness. Sometimes it seems as if you're not producing. Have you ever been there? You feel like, what am I doing? Why am I doing this? Why am I laboring day after day after day? What, what am I getting out of it? You go to work and come home. You go to work and come home. Where's the promotion? Where's the increase in pay? Where's the recognition for what you do? Uh, maybe you're a minister not seeing the fruits of your labor there where the souls who's listening it's your business you're toiling with your business what are the results is the business growing is there an income coming in what's happening you may be toiling with health issues, doing everything that you can possibly do, going to the doctors, taking medication upon medication, toiling with relationship issues, toiling with finances. It's as if your pocket has a hole The money goes into the bank and out of the bank, in and out. Seem like it's going out faster than it goes in. Toiling with conscience. Can't sleep at night. Toiling. You may be toiling with your spirituality. Am I hearing from God? I feel like God is silent. Toiling. Have faith in the one who gives us victory. You know, it is said, it is always darkest before the dawn. We've heard that saying, right? Also, we've heard the saying, which comes from the Bible, this one, a kernel of grain before falls in the ground it has to die right guess what before the kernel produces it goes through a period of darkness where it's covered from sunlight it goes through a period where it dies but then it bursts through hallelujah glory to god the thing that obscured it from being seen and it produces You know, let me read this passage scripture to you. John 21, 3 through 6, to show you that Yeshua, Jesus, gives us victory over fruitlessness. When we feel as if we're being fruitless, all we need to do is give our toiling to the Lord. Just 
He said, cast all your cares upon me because I first care for you. Just give him the toilet. So let me read this portion of scripture. Simon Peter said, I'm going fishing. We'll come too, they all said. So they went out in the boat. So to put this in context, this is after Christ had died and arose again, right? And so here they were, and they were, you know, they were at a place where they were afraid, they're hiding, and they're just having maybe some blah days. Have you ever had blah days? You feel like, what am I doing? I'm not really being productive. Toiling. Being fruitless, right? We're talking about fruitlessness. So Peter was feeling a little bit fruitless. So he says, listen, I'm going fishing. The other disciples said to him, we'll come too. They all said. So they went out in the boat. But they were still fruitless. They caught nothing all night. Now listen, here it was where <laughs> they're just twiddling their thumbs and they're like, listen, we're not doing anything. Peter is like, he was a fisherman. So he's saying, listen, at least I know when I used to fish, I would catch some fish. Gives me a sense of purpose. There's nothing like feeling as if you have no purpose. You're, you're not accomplishing anything. Accomplishing anything. When you feel fruitless, it's not a nice feeling. Trust. I understand it. I know it. I've been there. And so he's like, but I know fishing and I always will catch something. You know, sometimes you may have a job and on the job, you're, you're seeing the job not going anywhere. Or you start a business, but then you remember you used to do a little hustling on the side or you used to do, you know, maybe you would do a little catering here, a little cooking there, or you'd cut hair or you'd braid hair or, you know, you'd sew some clothes, you know, something else. So he went back to what he knew would yield something, right? Guess what? Nada. Mm -mm. Bible says, but they caught nothing all night. All night they labored and they were still fruitless. Well, at dawn see it's always darkest before the dawn they were toiling in the night now at dawn jesus was standing on the beach but the disciples couldn't see who he was he called out fellows have you caught any fish no they replied then he said Throw out your net on the right side of the boat and you'll get some. So they did. And they couldn't haul in the net because there were so many fish in it. Hmm. They labored in the dark. Do you ever feel as if you're laboring is in the dark. Everything is obscured. You're producing nothing. You're doing and you're doing and you're doing. And you're like, Lord, I'm doing, but I'm not seeing any results. You, you know, like when you plant that tree, tree grows up. You're looking at the tree and you're going, wait a minute. Shouldn't you be bearing fruit by now? And nothing. Year one, nothing. Year two, nothing. And I, I told you in, in the book that I wrote where we had a tree. I'm telling you, this tree was there for years. And and and, and, and I remember the, the, the guy who was taking care of the property. He said, um, it's a male tree. And he's like, it's no good. Chop it down. And my grandmother was like, uh-uh, nah, mm-mm. You're not chopping down that tree. Not at all. You know, my grandmother used to say, one a dead, no call it doppy. It's a Jamaican saying, meaning if the thing hasn't died, there's still life in it. And so she's like, no. Let it run its course. 
And so, hmm, can I tell you, that tree finally bore. And when it bore, the fruit that it produced was superior. Like the uh, it was it was similar to another tree we had, but his fruits were larger. They were sweeter. I tell you, I was surprised. And then came to learn that trees that grow slower live longer. And older trees are more beneficial. They produce better. They purify the air. It's also in my book, seriously. You think it's the younger trees, like in society. See, that's why we need to read the Bible because you have to see what the Bible talks about people in their older age. Like society, we, we live in an age of society. So you get to a certain age and people discard you and go, eh, you're old, you're over the hill, you're, you're whatever, whatever. Not in God, not, not here. Not in this book that says victory. Hallelujah, glory to God. Not in this, not in my Bible. Read what God says. <laughs> Caleb at 85 was like, what, 45? Was it 80 or 85? Well, 45. He was like, he wasn't. Sons and daughters of God, read the Bible. Moses was climbing a mountain at 120. He ran when he was, what, 90 or 100. He was running. Today, we give up. People turn 30 and they're like, oh, they're over the hill. It's not biblical. Read the Bible. And I'm talking, the Bible did say, I'm talking after sin now. I'm talking after sin. Come on. We need to read the word of God because he's showing us. Nature knows it. Why can't we know it? So Jesus, when we give him, instead of laboring in the dark, how about we give him our labor? Because when victory shows up, after we've labored in the dark, producing nothing, when victory shows up, we're going to produce more than we can imagine, more than we can think. The Bible tells us, commit our ways unto him and he'll establish it. When we commit our toiling over to God and when we trust him and do not fear, we will have bountiful harvest. We just need to trust God. Commit it. Commit. Cast all the cares upon the Lord. Cast the fear away. Commit our doings unto God. Everything we do when we commit it to him, how is it supposed to fail when we give it to victory? It cannot fail. It cannot fail. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Health will be better than you or the doctors thought. Thriving businesses, unbelievable wealth, a mass that has no sorrow, marriages restored better than the days of the wedding, Relationships strengthened and true. Minds being more sound than ever before. Souls being truly saved. Because victory overcame our struggles. As I said before, in order for there to be victory, there has to be something to overcome. There has to be a battle. However, 
do not be afraid of the battle. Do not be afraid of the whatever is going on because victory is already secured. It's a done deal. Glory to God. So as I close, victory says this, Isaiah 55 and 12, you will go out with joy and be led forth in peace. The mountains and hills will burst into songs before you and all the trees of the fields will clap their hands. Now, come on, sons and daughters of God. If the, Do you want the mountains? Wait a minute. Do you want the mountains to sing and the trees to clap and you not clap? When the Bible says that are we not better than the ravens? We are created in the image and the likeness of God. Jesus gave up his life for ours so that we are reconciled into our rightful places, into sonship with God. He said, I came to reveal that you are Abba, Daddy God, Father. And so, as I close, I close with this, truly close with this. Good morning, Shireen. Good morning, Paulette. How are you, niece? How's everything, how's everything going? To God be the glory. The head that once was crowned with thorns is crowned with glory now. The one who wore our sin and shame now robed in majesty. The radiance of perfect love now shines for all to see. His name is victory. We give you praise. We give all our praise to you, Christ Jesus, our Lord and King. Your name, Yeshua Mashiach, your name, Christ Jesus, is victory. To God be the glory. Hallelujah and amen. Have a wonderful day, everyone. Go on into this day. Go about into the way, knowing that victory is already yours. Because when you belong to victory, victory is yours. No matter what the thing that comes your way, victory is already yours. In Jesus' name and for his sake. Have a blessed and a wonderful day. And know that all of us, are so loved by God. We're loved exquisitely, eternally, unmeasurably, immeasurably, and unfathomably. Sorry, immeasurably. We cannot measure the depth or height of the love that God has for us. All we need to do is be obedient children of God, walk in the truth of God, we cannot do it without the word of God. We have to go by the dust of the word of God. Because in the times we're living in, all matter of winds are blowing. All matter of messages are being spoken. And they sound pretty. And they sound good. And they're swaying. You heard what I read. The news reported. True believers are worshiping a whale. They're not true believers. Let me tell you, they're not true believers because when you know the truth, when you know who your victory is, when you know that Christ Jesus is victory, when you know that you know that you know that God is real and that he is the I am that I am for whatever situation, when you know our omniscient, omnipotent, omnipresent God, is the one and only and true Eckhart. There is none that can be compared. None that is like unto him. You won't worship another thing in his stead. You can't. I don't know about you, but I tell you what, God is real. He is realer than real. Realer than my skin. Realer than your skin. 
He's real. He's reliable. Oh, he is reliable. And he's relevant. So go for it into the day and into the way. Trust your victory, whose name is Christ. Trust your victory, who is Yeshua Mashiach, our Lord and Savior. Trust him. Have a blessed and a wonderful day, everyone. Thanks, Bishop. Thank you, guys. Thank you for tuning in. Have a blessed and a wonderful day, everyone. Thanks, Pastor Thornton and all who tune in. Thank you for tuning in. To God be the glory.